the more videos you watch on this channel you will not only learn physics but you will also get to know about the greatest minds in the history of physics and my personal favorite being two of them sir isaac newton and albert einstein because their contribution to physics is just unlimited it's uncountable and they have contributed a huge huge amount to physics and today we are going to see why newton is one of the greatest physicists of all times now gravity is the most familiar of the fundamental forces and played an honored role in the development of mechanics so because newton had developed calculus so this picture i don't think you do not know everyone knows him but still he is if you didn't know sir isaac newton right and newton began his uh, discoveries that is he invented calculus invented uh, or put forward his laws of motion just because he wanted to explain the laws of gravity and in fact he was successful he discovered the universal law of gravitation which i'm going to explain to you right now right in this video and you might have also learned you know, the universal law of gravitation in your high school he invented the universal law of gravitation in the year 1666 right the same year so he invented the laws of motion and the universal law of gravitation in a single year right and he could derive the kepler's law of motion or kepler's law of a planetary motion using his universal law of gravitation independently right he didn't copy kepler but he derived those same laws using his universal law of gravitation empirical laws because uh, he didn't give a mathematical derivation but which was given by the great isaac newton and uh, can you guess at what age newton had discovered this at the age of uh, in the year 1666 what age was newton can you just guess he was just 26 years old and he discovered all this in a single year that's why newton is the greatest physicist of all time now what is the newton's law of gravitation right what is the newton's law of gravitation newton's law of gravitation now putting the newton's laws of gravitation in simple english it is uh, it says that two particles uh, attract each other with a force that is proportional to the product of the masses of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them
and gravity is always attracted. Unlike uh, electromagnetic forces, and in my first video, what is physics? I have explained this to you and how this is a great mystery. Do check it out. Now, this is great, but uh, writing phys physics laws in uh, simple English is not very nice, right? Contrary to what most people think, because you might think that English is easier to understand than math, but that doesn't happen in physics. At least for me, I do not understand any physics unless somebody puts an equation in front of me. So let us see how Newton's law of gravity looks mathematically. Right. So for this, we consider as Newton says two particles A and B. So this is particle A, this is particle B with mass MA and mb and let the distance between these masses be equal to r right then what does newton's law of gravitation say that two particles attract each other with a force that is proportional to the product of their masses right so that means the force let me call it the gravitational force between a and b as f of a and b in fact, let us first look at its magnitude. So that is, it says, is proportional. That means it depends upon the product of the masses, which means ma mb. And what else does it, uh, Newton have to say? It is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Inversely proportional to the square, one upon the square of the distance between them. Which means, that the magnitude FAB is equal to the see I have not drawn the arrow on top that is which means that this is the magnitude so this is same as this right so this magnitude is actually proportional to MA MB divided by R now these are just proportional but not exactly equal and actually we get a constant right so f a b is would be equal to if you drop the proportionality constant we get a constant of proportionality right which which is like a uh, experimental uh, twerking it depends upon this but we have to have a constant so that whatever experimentally we are getting it matches the theory right so we get g MAMB divided by R square, where G is the universal gravitational constant. Universal gravitation constant. Now constants can either have dimensions or do not have dimensions. And uh, here, the universal gravitational constant has dimensions. It has units. And I leave it as a homework for you to find out the units of a universal gravitational constant, which you can just find by solving this equation. Now universal gravitational constant to the value was first found by Henry Cavendish. in the year 1771 right so you can calculate after how many years of the discovery of the gravity uh, gravitational law of newton did he actually measure the universal gravitational constant right using a torsional balance so he he found the value of universal gravitational constant using uh, some torsional balance and you can find out is a very interesting experiment do check it out and do some research on this experiment but that is not the motive of this video so we are going to i'm going to leave that too as a homework for the viewer so he is uh, since he found the universal gravitational constant and hence we could find acceleration due to gravity as we shall see 
in future videos. Uh, he is known as the scientist who weighed the earth. Now, although I gave you a homework to find the units of universal gravitational constant and you have to derive it, I'll tell you the answer which you are supposed to get along with the value of a universal gravitational constant of the value which uh, not found by Cavendish maybe, but which is very accurately known by, and found using some other experiments, right? The most accurate value of universal gravitational constant. So universal gravitational constant is equal to 6.673 into 10 to the power minus 11 meters cube. These are the units of, this is the unit of universal gravitational constant. You should get this after you have solved for the units of universal gravitational constant. Now, since gravity is weak, right? Gravity is very weak. Since gravity is very weak, it is very difficult to measure the universal gravitational constant. And so this uh, value, which I have just told you, is actually has an uncertainty. Which means an error. This is an error of 10 to the power minus 4 and is the least accurately known constant, fundamental constants in physics, right? So this is the least accurately known. The known fundamental, fundamental constants. of physics. So there are other fundamental constants of physics uh, which are more accurately known but this universal gravitational constant due to the weakness of gravity is the least accurately known fundamental constants of physics. And actually this uh, universal although we are getting too far from our topic but I would like to tell you as a matter of fact that this universal gravitational constant not only ap uh, appears in Newton's laws, but it also appears into Einstein's law, Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is a better theory than the Newton's law, than the Newton's uh, theory of gravity. You might ask me if that is a better theory, why are we learning Newton's laws at all? Because it is very, very, very hard. It is so difficult that at this point we cannot do it. We need to have a lot of mathematical background in order to understand and uh, learn Einstein's theory of general relativity. But I was just telling you that if you look at Einstein's field equations, then the universal law of gravity also appears in Einstein's field equation and it is the least accurately known fundamental constant of physics. So yeah, you have to deal with it. Now the next thing which you should know about gravity is that gravity is a central force. Which means that uh, gravity acts along the line joining the two centers of the two particles. If this is one of the particle and this is another particle, then gravity will act between the centers of these two particles. So it will act like this in the line joining the centers of the two particles. And that's why gravity is now is a central force. Now this is nothing but a particle A, this is a particle B. So now since gravity is a force, so far we have only been looking at the magnitude of that force, but now we shall look at the directions. So if I draw a vector starting from A, so if I set my origin at A and if I draw a vector to B, 
and call it R A B, right? Similarly, I can set my origin at B and I can draw a vector to A and call it R B A. Where uh, it is obvious that R A B, the magnitude of R A B and the magnitude of R B A is uh, equal to R. Which is a vector that we considered. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this vector, right? So it is that R. Then the force, gravitational force, would be nothing but since it is a central force, minus G M A M B divided by R square times the unit vector R A B. Why unit vector? Because we just want the direction. Remember, this gives the magnitude, and we just wanted the direction of the force also, which would be given by the unit vector. If we consider the whole vector R A B, then that would be a huge mistake because it would alter the magnitude of the force, right? We and we do not want that to happen. We just want the direction of the force, and we introduce a. Uh, the unit vector because it has only direction and no magnitude, right? I mean, it's it has magnitude of one, and that is why we have used it. Now we have used a negative sign because uh, we have basically assumed that this direction is the positive x-axis, and since B will be attracted towards A, it will have a force in this direction, in the negative x-axis, and that's why we have a negative sign. Whereas what we can do is use mathematics to show you something. Uh, that is, uh, if I just write this down quickly, what I can do is I can uh, associate this minus sign, this one, with the unit vector. So I will write it like this. A B. Now what is minus R A B? Minus R A B is what just now I've told you. That if R A B points in this direction, then R B A points in other direction, which means that R B A is equal to minus R A B, and hence we are going to get minus R B A B is nothing but R G M A M B upon R square into R B A unit vector. And what does this tell you that if B is attracted towards A in this direction with a force F A B, then if I call this F A B, then A will be attracted. Like then this is nothing but F B A, which means A will be attracted towards a B with a force F B, right? In the opposite direction because here the negative sign is gone; it is all positive, and R B A is this vector, right, from B to A, and it this points in the positive x direction. And what does this prove? Look carefully. This proves the Newton's third law. F A B. F A B is equal to minus of F. Because here there is a minus sign, but here there is no minus sign, and hence, using gravitation, you can see how we get an elegant proof of the Newton's third law. Right. So Newton's third law works. So that's it, guys. I wanted to explain to you Newton's law of gravity, and to motivate me to create more such videos. Do subscribe to the channel and like this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.